Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um you're telling your viewers, okay. Alrighty guys. Turn this light. Now oh, that light does more better, huh? Alrighty guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, Instagram is telling people uh, we're on live, so if you would share, help us share right quick. Uh, we'll do that right quick. I'm not spending a lot of time with this because I've advertised it beforehand, so I'm not spending a lot of time with this, but I will invite some people here. We'll invite some people. We'll invite some people. You know, I, I sometimes some people that I talk to uh, in private, they never come to Miracle Nights. And it just come to me. It really did. It, um, but they called me personally and talked to me on the phone, but they, they won't and talk about how blessed they are spiritually and all this stuff, how, you know, but they never come to none of my things. <laughs> ain't that kind of funny? That's kind of funny, ain't it? It's what I talk to. So it just goes to show you what kind of motive they got behind them. Right? So, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time. All right. Okay, I'm going to share a few more, guys. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share a few more. Let's see. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay? We're going to go ahead and get started here. Like I say, we'll do a pre-record, so you know what? His word will not turn back. Boy, a lot of people don't come in here because they have demons. Okay, they don't they don't come because they have demons on them. A lot of demons don't want to come to services like this because they might get set free. We got to understand the day and time we're living in too. People don't want to come fellowship, whether it be uh, in a church or whether it be online or whether it be anywhere where the Holy Ghost is. They don't want to come fellowship, but it's all right. I mean, you know. Um, it is what it is, guys. This is this is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with now. We're not talking about going to church. We're talking about fellowshipping. Paul said, "Don't forsake it. Don't forsake it." But most of these people say they go to church, but they have church on their phone with people in private, but they don't come together, whether it be here, whether it be in a church, or wherever it might be. They never come to it. But they'll talk to you in private with God, you know, you and them, you know. But they'll never come to none of your things or nothing. So... You know, I, I, it, that just uh, quickened my spirit, and I, I was kind of questioning that. So, and like I say, they'll talk to you in private on phone, but they won't come to none of you, none, none, none of these things. So, um, kind of makes me question their their relationship, and they talk about your ministry and talk about you like all highly, but. 
Mm. I've asked God to give me discernment in this hour because I'm tired of being around people that's not of God. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, guys. This thing's updating. I don't. This thing's always updating somehow. I don't know. This thing's always updating. The radio thing's updating. So, bear with us, guys, and share, 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 share. All right. All right. Wow. What? 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 Yeah, this thing. Hold on, guys. Uh, I don't know why it ain't. Let's see here, guys. Why it ain't going back in here? Test. Well, I don't know why. Uh. Uh, I don't know why it's echoing here. Uh, uh, okay, here we go. Maybe I need to go here. There we go. There we go. No, right here. No. Uh, huh. Well, there we go. Well, it's, uh, okay. I don't understand what that's doing, but okay. All right, guys. Sorry about that. We're getting this. Hello, guy. Hello, Mr. Collectibles. How you doing? All right, we're going to get started, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, this thing is updated, and it's kind of echoing a little bit. But that's all right. We'll get started. Okay. All righty. Let's stop this, and let's try this again. Okay. All righty. Let's move to garbage, move to garbage, move to garbage, move to garbage, and let's go again. Righty. Welcome to Miracle Night with Prophet... Jason, welcome to Miracle Night. Expect your miracle tonight. All righty, guys. All righty. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, we are um, we are uh, online. Our website's still not up. It's still under construction at www.godsaveministries.com. It's also um, we have a we have launched a uh, program to help people uh, train people online to generate an income. If you if you want to generate an income from your home, work two hours a day, make ten grand a month. There's people making more than that, twenty grand a month. Uh, it's all stuff online that you can generate. Uh, the cost of it, the start cost up is uh, four ninety seven, but we also offer payments uh, with that. So uh, I think it's one twenty four every two weeks till you get the four ninety seven paid off. So, and then this course will teach you how to implement and make an income online, guys. So if that's something you're looking for, uh, message me down here or message me on here, guys at jason at, at kingdomwealth.com. I mean, I'm sorry, jason at kingdomwealth.co, C-O. Jason at kingdomwealthnow.co. I'm going to say that again. Email me at jason at kingdomwealth, 
now.co. That, that is a dot .co. It's not dot .com. It's dot .co. You can also go to our website, our radio. We're on the radio 24 hours a day. Um, you can listen to music, preaching, and all kind of stuff. Uh, go to uh, www.thekingdomradio.com. And you can also go back and listen to every one of these podcasts, uh, thekingdompodcast.com. You can go back there in the email. Uh, Penny is jason at kingdomwealthnow.co. And you can email me and I'll give you some more information. Uh, you can sign up on our email list. And don't forget the email list neither, guys. Uh, it's growing, by the way. Uh, if you want to sign up on our email list, it is www.connect.godsavingministries.com. Go to that page, sign up for the emails. You'll get emails from us, what's going on in the ministry, and a word from God daily in your inbox. So anyways, guys, I am so excited what God is going to do tonight. God has been speaking to me a word, and, and the word that he has been speaking to me is fear. You know, sometimes we let fear cripple us. Jason at kingdomwealthnow.co. Yes, there it is. So if you want, if you're listening from the radio, guys, jot that email down, send me an email, and I'll send some more information back if you want to generate an income online. Um, it's good stuff. It's good training, guys. It's good training. So I, I would, uh, I want to give you the opportunity as a child of God to to prosper and, and, and get more income and let God bless you in the areas. But anyways, I want to uh, come to you tonight about fear. If you, if you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Genesis. We're going to start in Genesis chapter three, uh, Genesis chapter three, verse 10. We're going to be talking about fear tonight. Fear can paralyze you in the blessings in your life. You know that? Fear can cripple you in your faith. And so many times we let fear come in when we start worrying about the bills. Come on. When we start, come on. When, when we start worrying about the bills, we let fear grip in. When Satan tries to make us have a lot of problems to let fear come in, he's trying to bluff at you through circumstances. So he's trying to use circumstances to bluff at you to make you become fearful. Now, we don't have time to fear nothing. By the way, God got me a Harley Davidson because he was trying to get fear out of me. Listen, God did not give us a spirit of fear. The only fear that we're supposed to have as mankind is to fear the Lord because it's the beginning of wisdom. Anything else, no fear. So if you have any kind of else of fear, it's not of God. See, I'm going to show you in Genesis chapter 3, 3, 10, okay? I'm going to show you something. And as I was in the shower today, God spoke to me once again. He said, son, you got to quit fearing because it's crippling your faith right now. The enemy is using circumstances to try to get you to fear. And I don't, I don't know about y'all, but we all wrestle with this one time or another. Especially when God does big things for us, give us things, pay off things, give us cars and vehicles and houses and boats and all this stuff. And then, then we begin to walk in fear. And when we begin to walk in fear, it cripples us. It cripples our faith in God. And faith and fear is two different opposite things. See, faith will go to sleep in a storm. <laughs> faith will go to sleep in a storm. But fear will stay up all night and can't sleep. Come on now. But see, God had not give us that spirit. That spirit is from the devil because he's bluffing at you. He's allowing circumstances to get around you. But I don't know about you, but we need to be a lot Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Meshach and Abednego, what they did is they said, turn the fiery furnace up because somebody in this room is standing with us. They weren't afraid of circumstances. You see, the children of Israel walked in the spirit of fear when they, when they failed to get, come against 
the, the Red Sea and all of a sudden all the all the uh, soldiers was coming after them after God done delivered them out of the children, uh, out of Israel with Pharaoh. You remember Pharaoh? He had to let them go, and they still chased after. But they was in a dilemma where they couldn't go anywhere. Sometimes the enemy gets you in that area where you think you can't go nowhere. Hello, hello, K. Okay. The enemy gets you where he thinks you cannot go anywhere. But my friend, God has not gave you that fear. See, Satan uses circumstances to create this fear. He tells you, look, you're not going to be able to pay your rent. See, you're not going to be able to pay your bills. See, he gets you in circumstances where you lose money or you lose everything else. Hello, Pete. How you doing tonight? Hallelujah. God gets us in a place where he says, I don't care what the enemy has done to you. I don't care where he's positioning you. You do not fear him. You got to do like Jesus. Go to sleep in the boat. See, ain't it kind of funny? The first time Jesus met the disciples, he met the disciples and he said, listen, we're going to the other side. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm, this is a prophetic word for somebody tonight. You go into the other side, whether you like it or not. See, the problem is he, he took, he took the disciples into the storm for a reason. God takes you in storms for a reason. He's trying to train you to quit fearing. He's trying to train you when you look at a storm, you can say, storm, I'm not going to fear nothing you can do to me because you can't hurt me. You can't touch me. All I got to do is stay in the boat with Jesus and I'll be just fine. See, the enemy tries to cripple us in our faith with this thing called fear. Why do we still fear when God is giving us faith? See, there's only one thing that pleases God and it's called faith. But when your faith is being tested, my friend, all you got to do is sit back and say, God, I don't know how I'm going to pay the rent, but I'm going to pay the rent. I don't know how I'm going to buy this house, but I'm going to buy this house. I don't know how I'm going to start this business, but I'm going to start it. See, that's what faith does, friend. But fear comes right behind it and, and, and begins to cripple. And I'm going to show you in, in God's word, Genesis chapter 310. If you got your Bibles, say amen. If you got your Bible tonight, say amen. And we're so glad you're on here, PK. Thank you for coming on. May God bless you tonight. I know he is. He's fixing to bless you. Uh, Genesis chapter 310. And it says, and he said, I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid. This is what Adam said to God in Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. And he said, I was afraid. See, he let fear grip him. And I was afraid. I was naked and hid myself. But see, what happened to Adam was he got it out of a placement with God. He started listening to the enemy and listening to his wife and listening to things around him instead of the voice of God. See, my friend, we can get off listening to things around us and we can become fearful instead of faithful. There's a difference. There's fearful and there's faithful. Faithful is that you trust in God no matter what circumstance looks like. See, it don't matter. Uh, 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 Abraham, God told Abraham that he would have Isaac, <clears throat> but the whole time the circumstance didn't talk to him that he was having Isaac. So his wife began to fear and doubt God and, and, and go out and say, well, you know what? We'll just, we just have a kid with my maid servant. We'll do it my way. But Abraham stood to the promises of God. Some of you do not need to stand on the promise of God. If God's promised you something, you can bank on it. It's going to happen. Not on your time, not on my time, but it's going to happen on his time. That's right. It's going to happen on his time. Why do I say this tonight? Because fear cripples faith. We got to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. See, you don't see it yet, but it's it's coming. <laughs> you don't see it yet, but it's coming. See, fear looks at circumstances and begins to cripple. 
Fear looks at circumstances and begins to cripple. But faith looks at circumstances and has a hope and says, you know what? I don't see the promise yet, but it's coming. So Rabbi K, somebody's on here tonight. You've been looking for a promise and God said it's on its way. I'm telling you, you've been trying to start that business and it's on its way, God said. Tonight, you got miracles that you've been praying for and God said it's on the way. You can't see it, but it's on the way. Faith. Faith. So what is faith? Such of the things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. See, I see a mansion. I see this prosperity God wants to bless me with, but I hadn't actually seen it with my flesh eyes, but I seen it with my spirit. It's on the way. I'm telling you, it, it's on the way. And you got to keep telling yourself that. And as long as you're telling yourself that, that means it's, it's about to manifest. A lot of you are going to get lands this year. I feel a prophetic spirit just jumped on me, and I'm going to prophesy to you right now. God said in 2024, God said, I, I, I see lands coming to somebody tonight. God's supposed to bless you with new lands. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. And God said to this year, your family, somebody's family is coming together. Somebody's family is coming together. You've been praying for your family over and over. And God said this year, 2024, is going to be a year of destiny for your family. God's going to bring every last one of them together, saith the Lord. God said this year, I'm going to bring promises your way. I'm going to bring promises your way, saith the Lord. I'm going to bring promises your way. Somebody's been praying for cataracts. God said I'm healing cataracts right now in Jesus' name. God said tonight, I'm also healing somebody's left leg. God said here, left leg is getting healed right now. And God said tonight, it's going to be 2024, the year of the fearful. Listen, God don't want you to walk by fear, my friend. Listen, you got to get ready for what God is doing in 2024. I don't care what everybody's saying. I don't care what these false prophets out here claim to be prophets. Talking about God's talking to them, saying doom and gloom is coming up. My friend, I don't hear that voice. I'm sorry. I Listen, he said, a sheep know my voice and a stranger. They will not follow. And I, 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 I'm here to tell you they're hearing the wrong voice. Here's the voice I'm hearing. God said in 2024, you're going to see a turnaround in the media. You're going to see a turnaround in the White House. My God, I feel this so much tonight. See, we got a lot of false prophets. Prophets out here, false prophesied, but you will see this come to pass. Everything God has showed me come to pass. You can ask my wife. She has saw things God has showed me, and it's come to pass. And God said, this year, I'm going to turn some things around. I see a table that's in the White House. I see a table, and God is just going to turn that thing around. And you know, COVID meant to destroy us, but it built us. My God, I don't, I don't fear COVID. I don't fear Biden. I don't fear the White House. I don't fear nobody here. All I fear is one man up above is God. Hallelujah. All righty, guys. Proverbs 1, 7. Let's get in the word right quick. If I can, this anointing is strong on me tonight. This anointing is strong on me tonight. Proverbs 1, 7. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and destruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 1, 7. Matthew 10, 28. Fear not them that can kill the body. Watch this. Listen, guys. Fear not them that can kill the body, but not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him that can destroy both soul and body. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. God said to not quit fear. You don't have room to have fear in your life, friend. You don't have room. That's, that's uh, Matthew 20, uh, 10, 28. In 2 Timothy 1, chapter 6 through 7, wherefore I put there in remembrance, but thou stir up the gift of God, 
which is in thee by putting on the land of the hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Now, you know how you're going to get that fear off of you? You're going to have to get an anointed man of God or a woman of God to lay hands on you and get that fear off you. Because that's what he said. Therefore, put thee in remembrance, stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, and by the putting on of hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and of love and a sound mind. And that is 2 Timothy chapter 1, 6 through 7. He hadn't given us that spirit, guys. That is a spirit that's trying to cripple you. Because God is about to bless you. But the God to bless you, you've got to be in position. What position am I talking about? You've got to be in that faith position, my friend. You've got to be in that faith position. Faith position. I, I, I know so many people walk around in fear. They fear to invest in a business. Come on, somebody. Come on. We do. We, we fear to invest in a business. We fear to invest in stuff that's going to make us money. We fear a lot of stuff. We fear a lot of stuff. We fear to walk out on faith and start that business. And let me tell y'all something. I started a church in Bremen, Georgia. I never will forget this. God spoke to me. This is what he told me. He said, son, I want you to start a church. Okay, okay. I said, God, where? And I was just sitting there. He said, you're going to go look for a church. I went and looked for a church. I tell y'all what, I didn't even have a, I didn't even have a following. I didn't have a following. The lady asked me, he said, sir, you want to put a church in this building? Well, yeah. I said, do you have a following? I said, no, nope. I ain't got nobody. All I got is a word from God. And that's what I told that woman that day. And here's what she told me. She said, well, the building is $700 a month, so we'll talk about it later when you get your following, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something. That woman called me back two weeks later, and she said, Jason, I can't sleep. I said, why? She said, God has kept me up for two weeks, night after night, telling me to help you start that building as a church. My God. See, that's faith, friend. I walked out on faith. I didn't, you know, let me tell you something else, too. I had 50 bucks to my name. That's it. I didn't have no money to start a church. I didn't have no following to start a church. But my God, I had a word from God. And that's all you need, friend. That's all you need. You need a word from God and you need to stand on it until it comes to pass. My God, somebody tonight needs a word from God. Listen, all you need is a word. That's it. That's all you need. And I got into this church and I'm going to tell you something. I grew that church in three months up to 80 something people. To me, that was an accomplishment. And you know what? We didn't have chairs in there. We didn't have nothing in there. And I said, God, you gave me the building. You can give me the chairs. My God, let me tell y'all something. We raised the money up and all of a sudden somebody come in there and donated. Somebody come in there and donated a gob of money for the church, for the church chairs. And I'm going to tell y'all something. The chairs was there. <laughs> Praise God. All you need is a word. You hear what I'm saying tonight? Some of you tonight, you've been praying for something and God said, I'm sending the word. Listen, all you need is a word from God. You don't need money. You don't need things. All you need is faith. And you don't need to fear nothing no more because God has done such good miracles in your life. How dare you fear anything that comes your way? Because you know God made a way then, he'll make a way now. You know God did it then, he'll do it now. I'm, t I'm, I'm encouraging somebody tonight. If God did it then, he'll do it now. My God, God said you need to grab a hold of some faith tonight because God is about to do some miracles in your life. Tell you something, that's the only thing that moves God. Fear does not move God. Matter of fact, it moves God away from you. I'm going to show you. In 1 John 4, 18 says, therefore, now I'm going to show you this and I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you a revelation of this right here. 1 John 4, 18. Turn your Bibles there right quick. I'm going to show you something right here. It says, there is no fear in love. There's no fear in it. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has no torment. 
Because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Now, I'm going to give you a revelation about that love he's talking about. John, first John's talking about that love. You know what that love is, friend? That, that ain't the kind of love you're talking about. No, 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 no. This kind of love is God's love. This kind of, let, let me, let me refer y'all back to John again, where John told me that God is love. And if God is love, and the Bible says he has filled your heart by the Holy Ghost, he's a shed of love in your heart. Listen, God causes us to love. None of us know how to love. We don't know how to love. Nobody on this planet knows how to love. You know why? Because God first loved us before we loved him. Listen, you know, you, you want to talk about, you go to Revelation and it talks about the, the conditions of the church. I'm just going to give you a revelation. You're going to be shouting here in a minute. You're going to run through your house. You're going to shout, shout, because God is just going to give you a revelation. And if you turn to, uh, uh, I think it's the first chapter in Revelation, it talks about the conditions of the church. And, 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 and the first condition, the angel come to him, said, there's one thing that I have against you. You have left your first love. What, what is this love that he's talking about in 1 John? Perfect love. That, that's what he said. He that fears is made in perfect love. He that feareth is not made in perfect love. So this perfect love is a relationship with the Father. Listen, God wants a relationship with you. That's it. That's it, my friend. He wants a relationship. And that, that condition of that church, that first angel, he said, one condition that I have against you, you have left your first love. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people that has, has traded other things for relationship with God. See, they jeopardized the relationship they had with the Father. See, that's what happened in the garden, my friend. He began to listen to his wife, and he began to listen to these other things. And God is saying tonight, God is saying, listen, if you'll concentrate on a relationship with me and come back to me and ask me, God, how can I get? And David said it just well. He said, Lord, do not take thy spirit from me. Renew a right spirit in me, God. Create inside of me a clean heart. God, I don't want to lose you. I'd rather lose the palace. I'd rather lose the wife. I'd rather lose the car. But I don't want to lose you, Lord. And listen, that's all God's concerned about tonight. He said, I want my relationship with you tied again. This is the reason why people fear. Because they, they have left their first love. Come on, who's your first love? It ain't your boyfriend. It ain't your fiance. It ain't your wife. It ain't your husband. It's God. It's God. He's the perfect love. This is what he's talking about. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Who is love? God is love. Man don't know how to love. Men, men will never know how to love. God so loved the world that he gave first. God showed us how to love. Come on. Men don't know how to love. God is love. And when we're made perfect in that love, we won't fear. Why? Because we have relationship. we perfect inside of that love. Who's the love? God. God is love. He said, but perfect love casts out fear. See, fear cannot come around you when the Father's around you. Come on, somebody. You better shout on that one. See, fear cannot live where God is. Why? Because he wants you to be fearless. He don't want you to fear nothing. Nothing. I got a Harley Davidson out there. God gave me a Harley Davidson. I'm going to tell you, I know God gave me that bike. I know. <laughs> when he gave me this bike, he told me, he said, son, I'm getting this fear out of you because you're going to learn to trust me instead of the bike. So many people won't ride a motorcycle today because 
that, well, people's going to run over me. Well, well, the bot can fall down on the ground. Well, 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 and well, well, whatever. If God's riding that bot with you, it ain't going to happen to you. If God is running, and you know what he gave me right after that? He gave me a Harley Davidson, and I got an outreach group called Riding Holy with God. See, God is riding on that bike with me. You know how I know? Because every time I get on that thing, he protects me every single time. Why? Because I trust God. I don't trust that bike. That's why, my friend, listen, when you have that kind of relationship with him, my friend, Perfect love casts that fear out. You won't have no more fear because you trust him that he's taking care of you no matter where you're at in life. No matter where you are in this life, God is going to always take care of you. Why? Because he's protecting you for one thing. And when you, when you doubt in him, when you fear, you're telling him, God, I don't trust you no more. Let me tell y'all something, and it is weird. I was fixing to go to my daughter's house on that Harley Davidson out there, and and when I went to the when I went out there, God kept telling me to check the brakes, check the brakes, and I checked the brakes, and guess what? I didn't have no pads at all. Now I could have got on that bike and no pads and no brakes. And I would have ended up on the side of the road. But I'm telling you, there's been so many chances, so many times God has protected me on that thing. Why? I don't skip. I'm not fearing a Harley Davidson. I'm not fearing a motorcycle. I'm not fearing anything. But I know God is with me. But when he's with me, he's going to protect me. Come on, somebody. God is protecting you. Psalms 91, he that dwelleth upon the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God is your refuge. And there's no fear in that. A lot of you are scared. Somebody's wanting to buy a house. And I'm going I'm to prophesy right quick, guys. Somebody is wanting to buy a house. And God says, go on and do it. Why? Because God is with you. Come on. Somebody, somebody's wanting to do something for God, and God said, go on and do it. God said, go on and do it. See, faith tells us to go on and do it. Fear grips us and paralyzes us. And look, if God said it, don't do it. I told my wife, I got a, I got a truck out there. I got a camper. God blessed me with a camper. God, go, God went and told me to buy that camper. I said, Lord, what are we going to do with the RV? He said, I don't know. He said, I want you to have an RV. I said, well, Lord, if it's your bill, it's your deal. And you know what? He's provided ever since. Why? Because God is in it. Guys, God has taught me into so much stuff. He's taught me to get that Harley. I don't want no Harley Davidson. He taught me to get it. And he started training me to walk not in this fear. Listen, you can't walk in fear, guys. You can't live a fearful life. You can't live fear in every little thing in the book. You cannot do it. And guys, I want to encourage y'all once again before we get off here. I want to encourage you, Penny, if you put that up, www.connect.godsaverministries.com. Or you can go up in the bio in our Instagram link up here and sign up for a daily word for God. A lot of you probably own that list. I'm not sure. And I want to I want to say this to you guys too. If you're looking for an income online, we got a system here to train you to do that, to income your family, to be a blessing for your family. People are making 10 grand, people are making 20 grand a month doing this. And you can uh email me at Jason at kingdomwealthnow.co and I thank my wife had that on there earlier um, you can email me and say Jason I, I want to link to that information to build a business online um, that's a promise that's right brother that's right Here, here's the thing guys God has told me to step in so much things in this season and a lot of people are fearing Biden and fearing all this stuff going on in the media. And we're, you know, supposedly going to go under. And, you know, God, that's not God. 
I'm sorry. You you know what? God will speak to you to start building a boat when it ain't even raining. Come on, somebody. God will tell you to, uh, baby, that's uh, www.connect.godsaveministry. Uh, There's a dot right after that connect, guys. So, uh, But anyways, the link's up there in the bio if you want to just go to the link in the bio of Instagram here. Um, you can also go to uh, a lot of other things too, uh, but just email me at jason at kingdomwealthnow.co. You can email me if you want to get involved and I'll send you some more info on the business model that we're teaching a lot of people. But anyways, God's taught me into a lot of stuff and all these people out here are fearing all kinds of stuff. They're fearing all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, well, the economy's going down and stuff's getting higher and <laughs> yeah, God's going to tell me to buy Harleys and campers and new truck and vehicles. Come on, somebody. God will tell you to do stuff. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys something. God will tell you to build an ark when it ain't rained in years. Come on, somebody. Why? Because God knows the future. And I'm going to tell y'all something. This, this stuff we've been going through in the last few years about this president and all this stuff, guys, there's an end coming to this. I'm telling you, God doesn't show me that. There's an end coming to every bit of this. Let me tell y'all something what God has showed me. And I'm going to tell you, this stuff's deep, so don't, don't, don't freak out, okay? God showed me that God's wanted to bless America for centuries. I'm telling y'all, ever since Abraham Lincoln, God has wanted to bless this country so much, but the enemy keeps stopping it every time, stopping it, stopping it. Every single time. And I'm going to tell y'all something. It, God has wanted to bless this country so many years. And God spoke to me like no other. This is what he said to me. He said, Jason, I will have my way. He said, I will have my way. That's why I sent a Trump. That's why I sent a Trump. And guys, I'm not politic. I'm not, I'm not Democrat. I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not getting into politics tonight. I'm getting into a word from God. And God spoke to me. This is what he told me. He said, son, I will have my way in America. That's my country. I founded that country and I'll take care of that country. I always have. And he said, I will have my way in this country because I'm about to remove everything that's hindering my process of blessing this country because I've wanted to do this for decades and man has got in my way. And this season, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, what I've been wanting to do for years. But I'm going to tell you something. The enemy is going to back up in this season because y'all are fixing to see something we've never saw in history in, in America. History. This country is about to see the greatness that it ever has in history. But everybody else is speaking wrong. Everybody else is speaking doom and gloom. But God is speaking to me something that I'm telling you, you better grab a hold of this. And I'm telling you, you will see this come to pass. You can come back to me and say, Jason, that thing right there has come to pass. You spoke it and God did it. And let me tell you something. God has wanted to bless this country for decades. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a, a remedy. I'm going to show you what the enemy has done to this country over the years. We look at Abraham Lincoln. He gave the we the people. God put Abraham Lincoln in there. They assassinated him. J.F. Kennedy was another one God showed me. And God said, I've tried to put so many men in there to try to straighten this country the way I wanted it. To. But God said, I'm, I'm about tired of it. And I'm going to put a permanently end to it. That's what God told me. He said, that's why the enemy is fighting so bad because something so good is about to happen. My God, that's why COVID hit. That's why this hit. That's why, that's why President Trump got thrown out the back door and they still tried to murder him. But God said, the fight is not over yet. My God, God said, the fight is not over yet. I will have my way in this country. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you. God spoke to me that. And I, I'm telling you, God will have his way. 
And, and you know what? Every time God sent a man in that White House to try to straighten out this country, they bocked him up, they killed him, they slayed him and everything else. And my God, they, they, they pretty much did the same thing to Trump. And every time God sends somebody in there, a man that will set judgment on this world, a man that will turn things around for America. And I'm going to tell you another thing too. God showed me. Y'all get, y'all getting some treats tonight. God showed me too. God showed me all these other countries want us to bow to them. All them other countries want us to pay to them. And God said, I, they're, I'm going to turn that around too because they've always been a, jealous of America. They've always been jealous of America. That's why they want us down to nothing. And they've tried to paralyze us through paying them to do stuff. But God said, I'm about to turn that table around too. They're about, listen, they're about to buy from you. My God, God said, I'm about to turn that table around too. They're going to buy from the United States because God, I saw jobs being created all around the United States, everywhere, everywhere. I'm telling you, this too shall come to pass. I'm telling you, I don't care. I don't care what these prophets are saying out there. I don't care. I know what God has showed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all getting the good stuff tonight. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, listen to me real close. You watch this stuff come to pass. Watch it come to pass. That's how you know from a true prophet, from a false prophet. And God gave me a dream that there's false prophets in the land right now. Friend, you better be careful. There's false prophets in the land right now. They're speaking out of their emotions. They're not speaking from the Spirit of God. They're not speaking from the Spirit of God. God showed me that. They're speaking from their emotions. They're looking at all this doom and gloom around us. But my friend, let me tell you something. When you grab a hold of faith, you don't look at circumstances. You listen to the voice. Come on, somebody. It, it, let me say, let me, let me share with y'all what a true prophet does. A true prophet listens to the voice. Go build an ark. It's going to rain. It ain't rained in years. What do you mean? Listen, I don't care. When it's opposite circumstances, you listen to the voice of God. I don't care what, what man tells you. Oh, we, we got to scare. We got to pinch our pennies. Listen, there's something great. God wouldn't have never laid on my heart to buy a Harley Davidson. God wouldn't have never laid on my heart to buy an RV. God would never lay on my heart to buy brand new stuff. If he didn't think future is ahead of us and it's coming, prosperity's about to hit us like a bandit. My God, and God spoke to me in 2023. He said, listen, I want you to tell the people to start building businesses this year. This year. And that's what I've done. I jumped on the wagon first. I, I started building me a business. And it, I called it Kingdom Wealth Now, LLC. I started building. And I'm training you guys to build your online business because God is getting ready to bless you. My God, my God, I feel his anointing on here. You know what? I feel the anointing on here so bad I, I can run through this, these walls. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling you. That's all I have tonight. <laughs> I can keep on going with this because I feel the anointing here tonight. I feel the anointing. Listen, guys, do me a favor. If you want to sow tonight, just email me. I want you to be private with me. I don't want to put you on the spot. I want you to be private with this ministry. If you got a blessing out of this night, I want you to email me at jason at kingdomwealthnow.co. If my wife will put that up at the bottom. And if you want to sow a seed to this ministry, just get with me on the email. Say, Jason, I want to sow a seed. I'll send you a link and sow a seed to help us in this ministry. Let me tell you something, guys. I have a mandate. My mandate is this. God's wanting me to speak to these nations. I'm telling you, God, God's, God has shown me vision. God has shown me vision. Me traveling all across this, all, all across this world. And, and I've seen it. I've seen it. But to help us do that, guys, I need you guys' help. I need your financial support. I need your prayers, too. Most impossible. But I, I want you to do this in private. I, I don't want to put your name up there. And you know what? The Bible says give in secret. And God sees in secret. He'll reward you openly. You know what? And, and, and you know what? Email me at jason at kingdomwealthnow.co and say, Jason, you know what? I saw you on there last night and I wanted to sow to your ministry. And we're not going to let nobody know about this because God sees what you're doing. God sees what you're doing. I don't believe in putting people on the spot that puffs them up, you know. Oh, he gave a lot, you know. No, 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 no. We're going to do this in private. 
We're going to do this in private. It's just between you and God. It's just between you and God. But if you want to sow a seed tonight, like I say, email me and say, Jason, I want to sow a seed. I really felt like I need to sow a seed tonight and help you guys do what you need to do in this ministry to get it out there. All right, guys. God bless you guys tonight. Thank you so much for coming on. And radio, thank you so much. Uh, people on the radio, thank you so much. And if you want to sow a seed on the radio, you can do as well. Uh, email me at jason at kingdomwealthnow.co. Email me there and say, look, I want to sow a seed. I'll send you the information so we'll see. Okay? All right, guys. Thank you so very much. God bless everyone tonight. There it is, guys. Jason, kingdomwealthnow.co. And like I say, email me there, and I will email you back, and we'll... we'll um, Go from there, okay? All right, guys, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. God bless everybody.